Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, in part 8 of the Mastering Multithreading series, we will be focusing on two critical issues that can arise in multithreaded applications, race conditions and deadlocks. So, before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the bell icon. That way, you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Race conditions in Cisha. What is race condition? A race condition occurs when two or more threads simultaneously access and manipulate a shared resource without proper synchronization. It's like a race where threads compete to modify the resource and the result can be unpredictable and undesirable. Why unpredictable and undesirable outcome? Because the thread who finishes writing their changes to it last, that changes get saved and that's why we experience unpredictable and undesirable outcome. Okay, let's try to understand with the example shown over here. This code depicts a race condition. In this example, we have a counter variable shared between two threads and each thread increments it 1000 times. However, there is no proper synchronization, which can lead to unexpected results. Okay, let's see these examples in detail. Here, there is a counter variable of int data type that I have initialized with the zero value. That's what I have written a static int counter is equal to zero. Now, there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. Here, what I am doing, I am just creating two threads that will increment the counter. That's what I have written thread, thread 1 is equal to new thread, increment counter, thread, thread 2 is equal to new thread, increment counter. If you see this increment counter method, what it does, it has one for loop that is going to get executed for 1000 times. And here in for loop, I have written this statement thread.sleep1. Why I have written this statement? Because I just want to simulate some work by introducing a small delay. That's what I have written thread.sleep1 method. Then I am just accessing this shared variable counter and incrementing by 1. And that's what I have written counter plus plus over here. But this increment is happening without proper synchronization. Okay, so that's what this increment counter method is doing. After creating an object of thread class, what I have done, I am just starting this thread thread 1 dot start thread 2 dot start and then i am just issuing join method to these two threads thread 1 and thread 2 and that's what i have written thread 1 dot join thread 2 dot join so these two statements will make sure that main thread to wait for the both thread to fit and once these thread 1 and thread 2 gets completed then we will be getting the final counter value right and that's what i am just displaying the final value of the counter into console window that's what i have written console dot write line final counter value counter so it will give me a final value of the counter now if you see this output we got the output final counter value 1957 as a part of first run second run we got 1874 third run we got 1892 so these outcomes are unpredictable and undesirable we were expecting final counter value as 2000 but it's not happening there is a possibility that we get 2000 also in nth run but it's unpredictable and it happened due to race condition, right? So now you must have understood that what is race condition and how it changes the output as unpredictable and undesirable one, right? Deadlocks in C-sharp. What is deadlocks? In C-sharp multi-threading, a deadlock occurs when two or more threads get stuck in a state where none of them can proceed because they are each waiting for the other to release a resource. Okay, let's try to understand with the help of examples on over here. So here I have created two resources, resource 1 and resource 2. That's what I have written. A static object resource 1 is equal to new object. A static object resource 2 is equal to new object. Then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. Here what I am doing, I am creating two threads. Thread 1 and thread 2. And thread 1 is going to point do work 1 method. Thread 2 is going to point do work 2 method. That's what I have written this. Thread, thread 1 is equal to new thread do work 1 thread thread 2 is equal to new thread do work 2 and then i am just starting these two with the help of a start method that's what i have written thread 1 dot start thread 2 dot start and then i am just making sure that main thread to wait until this thread 1 and thread 2 gets complete that's what i have written thread 1 dot join thread 2 dot join finally i am just printing this statement program complete okay so what do work 1 method does it just try to lock resource 1 first and then attempts to lock resource 2 while do work does the opposite. Basically, it is just going to place the lock request on resource 2 and then it is just trying to attempt on resource 1 lock. So, this can lead to a situation when both threads are waiting for the resources that the other holds. 
causing a deadlock. Here, this do work method is not going to get this resource to because resource two is locked by the do work two method, and do work two method is not going to get the resource one because it is locked by the do work one method. This is basically leading a situation where both the threads are waiting for the resources that the other holds, causing a deadlock. And as you can see this output, both threads are stuck waiting for the each other and the program never complete. This is a classic example of a deadlock scenario, right? Thread 1 hand holding lock on resource 1, thread 2 holding lock on resource 2, thread 1 waiting for lock on resource 2, thread 2 waiting for lock on resource 2. Basically, this is a deadlock situation. Okay, let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the race condition C sharp multi. For that, what I have done, I have created a console application. This condition deadlocked. This console application has program.cs. Program.cs file, there is a class named program that has counter variable of end data type that I have initialized with G. Then it has one main method, which is an entry point of this application. In this main method, I am just printing this statement into console because I am just giving the demo of the race condition C sharp. Then what I am doing, I am just going to create two threads, thread one and thread two. That will increment the count. This counter variable is going to get incremented by these two, right? So increment counter method is just going to get called. So what this increment counter method is doing is just having one for loop that is going to get executed one thousand times. In for loop, I am just writing this statement thread dot sleep one. Basically, it will be simulate some work by introducing a small delay, and then I am just going to access this counter shared variable and increment it by one without proper synchronization so that's what this increment counter method is doing over here. so let me execute this program and show this output because this output we will be printing into this console window via this statement console dot right line final counter variable count so this counter variable it going to get printed into this console window when we are going to execute okay so let me execute this program and see this output Okay, so output got appeared into this console window. If you see this race condition in C sharp multi threading demo got printed and the final counter value got printed 1962. Okay, so first time I ran output I received 1962. Let me close this. Let me execute another time. In second run, I got the value of 1931. In the previous run, I got the value of 1962. So if you see this final counter value is changing, it is not expected one ideally the expected value is 2000 because the thread one should get executed 1000 times and thread two also gets executed 1000 times and both is going to get increment this counter variable by one for each run right the value that i am expecting it should be 2000 but it is not giving the correct value the previous run i received 1962 value as a final counter value this time i am receiving 1931. So it's unpredictable and undesirable. Okay, let's see deadlock demo now. For that, we have this race condition and demo deadlock demo console application. It has program.cs file. Program.cs file, we have one class named program. Here I am create two resources, resource one and resource two. Then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. Here I'm just printing this statement deadlock demo in C. Because I'm just giving the demo of the deadlock C sharp over here. Right. Then what I am doing, I am just creating two thread, thread one and thread two. Thread one is pointing to do work one method. Thread two is going to point do work two. Right. Then I am starting this thread and and making this main thread to wait until this thread one and thread two gets complete. Thread one dot join, thread two dot join. And then I am just printing this statement program dot completed with the help of console dot write line. Okay. So that's what this main method is doing. Okay, if you see this do work one method, what I'm doing, I'm just placing a lock on resource one and then I'm attempting to lock the resource two also in this do work man, right? In resource one, when we applied this lock, I'm just printing this statement, read one holding lock on resource. And then I'm just simulating some work by writing this state, read dot sleep 1000. Okay. Then I'm just printing thread one waiting for lock on resource. Okay. And if we receive this lock, I will be printing thread one acquired lock on resource. So what I am doing in do work method, I am just doing the just opposite in the do work to me. Here, instead of resource one, I am just applying a lock on the resource two first instead of resource one, and then I am printing this statement into console window. 
and then I am attempting to log this resource 1 which is acquired by this do work 1 method. So, this can lead to a situation where both threads, thread 1 and thread 2 are waiting for the resources that the other holds. So, it creates a deadlock situation. Okay, so now you have seen what program I have written, right? So, let me execute this program and see what output we get. Okay, so output got appeared into this console. This statement got printed. Deadlock demo in C sharp, thread 1 holding lock on resource 1, thread 2 holding lock on resource 2. Thread 1 waiting for lock on resource 2. Thread 2 waiting for lock on resource 1. Notice, thread 1 acquired the lock on resource 1, but it is waiting for resource 2 lock, right? Similarly, thread 2 acquired the lock on resource 2, but it is waiting for lock on resource 1, right? So basically, both threads are waiting for the resource that the other thread holds. That creates an deadlock situation. That's why this statement did not get executed program complete because thread 1 is working on execution for do work 1 method and it is waiting for lock on resource 2. And in do work 2 method, which is being executed by thread 2, it is waiting for lock on resource 1 because resource 1 is not available because do work 1 method is applied lock over here. And here resource 2 is not available because do work 2 method has applied lock over here. So both threads are waiting for the resource that the other holds. So that creates a deadlock situation. So further execution is not happening due to this deadlock situation. Okay, that brings me to end of my session. To sum up, in this video, we have explored the concept of race conditions and deadlocks in C-sharp multi-threading. Understanding these issues and how to prevent them is crucial for building reliable and efficient multi-threading applications. In next video, we will talk about how to handle race condition and deadlock situation in much detailed way. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.